Biomes are large areas of the environment that are classified by their vegetation, soil, climate, and their wildlife. All of which are controlled by their temperatures and precipitation. Today, we're going to talk about the grasslands. Grasslands are large areas dominated by grass species that have a dry climate. They can be separated into two major categories, temperate grasslands and the tropical grasslands, which are sometimes called savannas. Temperate grasslands are further away from the equator than savannas and receive less precipitation than the savannas do, so they don't have shrubs or trees. These include the Great Plains of North America, the Pampas of South America, the Velt of South Africa, and the steppes of Eurasia, and surround the deserts in Australia. Unlike the tropical regions, these grasslands express more of the recognizable four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Grasslands generally only receive 500 to 900 millimeters of precipitation a year. That's only 20 to 35 inches of rain, sleet, or snow. The amount of precipitation determines the type of grasses that dominate. In North America, there are short grass prairies and there are tall grass prairies. Because tall grass prairies receive more rainfall, they can sustain taller species of grass. Temperate grasslands support a variety of wildlife, from the largest mammal of North America, the bison, to the smallest of herbivores like insects, to so many more. The animals and plants all have specific adaptations to survive this specific biome. Each winter, the grasses die back to their roots. Their roots and buds for next year's growth are then protected from the harsh winter by the dead grass on top. Animals are especially adapted to the grasslands. Many species have distinct brown and dark coloration to help them camouflage in the dead or dried grass. Take a bull snake, or a rattlesnake for example, that distinct prairie pattern. A lot of grassland animals are nocturnal. That means they come out at night. This helps them hide from predators, or if they are the predator, to help them find prey. Many mammals, like the American badger, that live their lives on the prairies have powerful front limbs to help them burrow into the ground to protect themselves from predators and to rear their offspring. Another good example is the prairie dog. Other mammals, like the American bison, have developed specific digestive systems to be able to get the nutrients that they need from the grasses that they eat. And in the winter, they grow thick winter coats to help them survive the harsh winter weather. Then when the warmer spring comes around, they shed off all of that extra hair. Savannas, also known as shrublands, chaparral, or tropical grasslands, are a more familiar sight and a familiar grassland. Think about the Lion King. Savannas experience seasons as well. However, their seasons are the dry season and the wet season. These areas receive more precipitation than the temperate grasslands, ranging from 200 to 1,000 millimeters. Since they get more rainfall, they tend to have more shrubs and trees than the temperate grasslands. And since that rainfall is temporary, the animals and plants have to adapt to that. Just like the grasses in the temperate regions, the grasses go dormant during the dry season as the temperate grasses do in the winter. The trees and shrubs of the savannas grow their roots deeper than other plants to get to the groundwater during the dry season. The animals are also well adapted to survive in the hot tropical climate of the savannas. The seasonal rains bring life into the savannas with a flush of plant life. But when the rain stops and the grasses go dormant, the animals that depend on that plant life must follow the food source and the water. A lot of the animals of the savannas are migratory. Some of the largest migrations in the world happen on these savannas. 
Camouflage also plays a crucial role in the survival of many animals of the savannas as well. The colors of many herbivores and predators alike match that of the savanna grass. But some don't match the fur coat of the light tan color like lions or gazelle. Some have very unique patterns like leopards and cheetahs. They have spots. But these spots also serve as camouflage. Leopards take advantage of the trees, and it's believed that the spots resemble shadows from the leaves. Then there's the zebra. Those distinctive black and white stripes don't really match anything else on the savanna. And it doesn't really look like they're camouflaged too well. But recent research shows that the zebra's stripes confuses biting insects, protecting the zebra from those pesky insects that can carry diseases. The savannas of Africa are home to some of the world's largest herbivores. Giants like rhinos, giraffes, hippos, African buffalo, and elephants. Some of these are grazers, which eat mainly grasses, and some are browsers that eat the leaves, fruits, and other parts of woody plants. Both the savannas and temperate grasslands are complex ecosystems, consisting of plants and animals not found anywhere else on Earth. Some of the most charismatic and recognizable animals come from these magnificent seas of grass, and each has evolved and adapted to survive the extremes of the grasslands. The cold, harsh winters, to the hot dry summers, keeping on the move to find water during the dry season, camouflage, and even unique patterns against the swarms of insects. These truly are some of Earth's most interesting biomes.